windows and it's boiling up here. The air conditioning on? It's on full blast. Yeah, well, it must be blocked up or something. There's nothing wrong with the air conditioning. Well, come up and see for yourself. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the blob. Did you just call me... Blob? No, not the mutant, but the creature featured in the 1958 sci-fi horror film starring Steve McQueen, its 1972 sequel, and the 1988 remake with Shawnee Smith and Kevin Dillon. First appearing as a meteorite that crashes into the countryside, the gelatinous amoeba-like organism began assimilating all life it came across, growing in size with each human it consumed. Try one of these Jamaican cigars, Ambassador. They're pretty good. Thank you, no. I do not support the work of imperialist stooges. Oh, only commie stooges, huh? Written during the paranoia and hysteria of the Cold War, the Blob was in essence a biological entity that represented America's fear of communism. And just like the foreign ideology that threatened the stability of the American way of life, so too did the Blob, which consumed Americans and transformed them into a gelatinous mass that had lost their individuality. Taking the form of a red amorphous mass of goo in the original film, the organism appeared to have basic intelligence akin to instinct, and after being disturbed by an elderly man who discovered it, the creature stuck to his hand, slowly dissolving his flesh upon contact until his entire mass was assimilated by the organism. The entity then began its journey of domination, attacking and assimilating anyone that was unfortunate enough to get in its way. Using this method, the organism was able to grow to an enormous size, and were it not for the discovery of its weakness, it would have likely continued to grow until it consumed all biological life on the planet. Unlike the thing which would assimilate and replicate the form of the being it had consumed in order to hide in plain sight, the blob was unable to make copies of itself, and once it had begun devouring its prey, its internal acid began liquefying their remains, transforming them into the amorphous goo the blob was composed of. I actually have a video going through John Carpenter's The Thing, which I'll leave links to below, and if you're a fan of the film, I highly recommend that you check it out. The Blob appeared to have an incredible resistance to damage, with electricity, pressure, and even weapons fire having no effect on the creature. The only thing that seemed to cause it harm was extreme cold, which affected the organism at a molecular level, preventing it from metabolizing, and we see it shying away from cold temperatures on numerous occasions throughout the series. In fact, the original blob was defeated by numerous people that descended on it with fire extinguishers, the release of which essentially removed all heat from the blob, preventing it from metabolizing further. The organism was then transported to the Arctic, where it would remain frozen, and though it was temporarily inactive due to the cold, the being was still alive, waiting for a change of temperature to free it from its icy slumber. The hurry, it must be 70 degrees out there. It's engine summer, boy. Before you know it, we're not gonna be terrorizing through this town with no apologies. The remake went in a similar direction, with the blob finally being stopped after being flash frozen in liquid nitrogen, which caused it to shatter into a mass of crystallized pieces. The ending also seemed to imply that its molecular structure was still intact, making it possible to reform its shape once again. This of course is not the end of the blob, as the final scene revealed that the preacher, who had survived an attack from the blob early in the film, still had some of the organism contained in a jar, and had planned on releasing it onto the world with the hopes of bringing about Judgment Day. As a creature, the blob most resembles a giant amoeba, which is a type of organism that has the ability to alter its shape primarily by extending and retracting its pseudopods. While usually synonymous with protozoa, which were single-celled eukaryotes, amoebid cells can also be found in fungi, algae, and animals. During a research expedition run by the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, which explored the deepest parts of the Mariana Trench, giant sponge-like organisms called xenophyophores were located 10 kilometers beneath the surface. These organisms, which are about 4 inches long, are the largest single-celled organisms found to exist on Earth. And much like the blob, they were also resistant to incredible amounts of pressure, though they did seem to thrive in cold conditions. I also thought it was interesting to note that contrary to popular belief, the largest organism on Earth isn't the blue whale or the elephant, but an enormous subterranean honey fungus that covers 9.6 square kilometers of the Blue Mountains in Oregon, which makes the concept of the blob as an organism that grew to encompass everything a little more grounded in biological reality than we may have thought. 
While the original set of films implied that the entity originated from deep space, the remake went in a different direction, leading us to assume that it was an organism that had crashed from space, until the film's conclusion where it's revealed that it had actually been created by the US government as a biochemical weapon gone wrong. This was a choice by writers Chuck Russell and Frank Darabont to help distinguish their script from what had come before it, especially after the commercial failure of the 1972 sequel, Beware the Blob. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Though the remake wasn't completed till 1988, both Russell and Darabont were so impressed by George A. Romero's 1973 classic, The Crazies, that they inserted the military as an oppressive force that stripped the townsfolk of their liberties to ensure containment of the organism. A recurring theme in both versions of The Crazies. I actually also have another video exploring the Trixie virus featured in The Crazies, going through Romero's 1973 classic and its successful 2010 remake starring Timothy Oliphant and Rada Mitchell, which I'll leave links to below. Some of the practical effects in the remake are incredible, and at times on par with the thing in regards to creativity and the shock response they elicit from us as viewers. And while the original movie was pretty camp and slightly dated, the 1988 remake surpassed its source material by creating a horrific yet hilarious intelligent parody of gory 80s horror films. Well that's all for today folks, big thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore the blob. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Sheriff's Department. Get me the sheriff, it's an emergency. Paul? Why? Where is he now?